And so if a tenant tells us that they don't like the Nest thermostat, well, guess what? Like that information is not getting lost because we're a third party operator, right? Like maybe the developer doesn't care about that information or maybe they do care, but it gets you know lost in translation. Not with us because we're vertically integrated, right? We take that information and maybe we decide we use Ecobee in the future. It's, it's the details that truly make a difference and sum up to something so, so special, right? Like you can go on a property tour and somebody hands you, you know, hey, like I, you gave me the floor plan and I want to write notes on the floor plan, right? So they hand you a big pen, right? That may not really be a big deal. But then when you go to a Fitrovia asset and they, they hand you a weighted pen, it's gorgeous, it's property branded. All those micro touch points sum up to something huge. Yeah. Okay, we're here with Ryan. Tell us who you are. I'm Ryan Funt. I'm the VP of Marketing at Fitzrovia Real Estate. We're the largest developer of purpose-built rental uh, in Canada with a pipeline of about 8,500 units. Um, that's me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to say he's already taught me two words that, or maybe three that you guys are different. I like your purpose-built because I don't usually hear people use that. That makes a total sense. The other thing, what was the other language you taught? Uh, Vintage, vintage. Yeah, you missed this, Reed. I think you're in the restroom. But he's he uh, class B is vintage because we, class B is offensive. We definitely don't like the term class B. We like to use the words uh, modern vintage communities to describe that asset class. Don't like the idea of A versus B type of thing. Totally, man. It, I mean, screams like you know elitist. You know, like the whole social class thing. It's it, like so. As soon as you say class B, it's like how are we supposed to take that? Yeah, 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 and the other thing too is there's just so much found potential in modern vintage communities, yeah. right? Like gorgeous terrazzo floors, amazing wrought iron uh, railing details, right? And so uh, it, it definitely shouldn't be the A versus the B. And and some of the sweet turns that we're doing on the modern vintage side are just dynamite, right? Like lightning in a bottle, and so. Um, we we think there's merits uh, on both sides of the equation. Yeah, that's great. I was about to say, could you uh, define purpose built for our listeners? That's a great question. I, I guess it kind of goes back to the Canadian market a bit, right? Like we've been a marketplace that's been predominantly dominated by condominium product. And when you used to talk about apartments in Canada for the longest time, uh, you would think about um, 1950s, 1960s, mid 1970s assets, right? Which were older buildings, right? And Sounds so, more like New York. Yeah, exactly. And 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 there wasn't really a market um, for brand new luxury Class A product. And so um, within the last five to ten years. Um, We've seen, you know, developers enter the Canadian space and want to build apartment buildings. Um, and so it, people were kind of tossing around terms left, right and center, right? Like, is it a condominium? Is it an apartment? And so uh, purpose-built rental, PBR, really kind of took off from there. I I don't know if that was what you were assuming, but it wasn't what I was assuming. For purpose-built? Yeah, because uh, well, I think about like, you know, socially, um, what's... Uh, God, it's from the book uh, Pink, but when he just talked about um, the what's the acronym or the label for companies that it, they're socially, you know, it's a social purpose. Oh, yeah. And so they they won't ever take more than four or five percent and and they actually get grants and they get some support from the government based on that um, because they're, you know, obviously uh, seeing a bigger picture, you know, for the greater mm -hmm. good. I don't remember what they so, called it, but yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying I mistook when I first heard purpose built. I was like, is there something, you know, as far as how these operators work or certain criteria that they have to meet in order to be cal uh, classified as P uh, PBR? PBR. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So thanks for the clarification. I'm glad I asked because I didn't. Uh, that's not where I thought you were going to take it. I, I was just familiar because um, I had been having a conversation with someone that talked about the condominium crash uh, in Canada. Oh, you're not, you're giving me a blank stare. So was I misinformed on this? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like we've been... Battery uh, search data. <laughs> yeah. We have been a market that's been dominated by condominiums, right? And a lot of that is um, sort of functioned as shadow inventory for the rental market, right? Because um, people need a place to live. And if you thought about a nice kind of rental unit, you thought condominium and hence purpose-built product. And so 
Um, Fitzrovia has really kind of leaned on what our friendly neighbors to the south have really just done an amazing job on, right? So buildings that are highly amenitized, best in class customer service, um, and really just pushing the envelope in, in Canada and our and our buildings are are truly um best in class, I would say. Um, and so we've actually branded a lot of our amenities, right? So our signature resort style infinity pools are called Lido. Um, we have two story uh, commercial grade um, gyms at our at our buildings called the Temple. They're official hammer strength training facilities. Um, the director of um, performance for the Ottawa Senators actually designs our gyms, which is pretty amazing. Um, our, our pet spas are called Beauty for the Beast. And so um, <laughs> we are we are really taking things to the next level. Um, and it's, it's a pretty uh, amazing place to be working, right? Like you don't really get to walk down the halls of a development shop and kind of say hi to a barista, right? We're operating our own cafes and bars called Tendine, and we have rotating espresso beans on a monthly basis. We have handcrafted cocktails that really, this, this Tendine cafe bar really activates the lobby experience. It feels more like um, a luxury hotel than a rental community. Um, you, you walk further down our corridors and you're meeting educators, right? We're now operating our own private schools called Bloomsbury Academy, um, led by Tara Silver, who's um, a Harvard educated educator, right? And so we're creating holistic communities, right? Places where uh, people want to live. And by the way, um, 10 Dean Cafe Bar, you get a discount if you live at a Fitzrovia community. Um, if you sign your child up for Bloomsbury Academy and you live at one of our communities, it's uh, a discounted tuition, right? So we're really creating a sense of community uh, above and beyond some of the things that we we kind of typically talk about, like resident events. We throw incredible resident events, but that's kind of table stakes, right? Um, and so just thinking differently, and I, I think, you know, part of our competitive advantage is our vertical integration. We take assets from land acquisition to property management operations. Um, we have in-house construction. We do in-house development. We do in-house design. Um, and, and as a result, we're, we're building better product, right? We're collaborating from A to Z. And so if a tenant tells us that they don't like the Nest thermostat, well, guess what? Like that information is not getting lost because we're a third party operator, right? Like maybe the developer doesn't care about that information or maybe they do care, but it gets, you know, lost in translation. Not with us because we're vertically integrated, right? We take that information and maybe we decide we use Ecobee in the future, right? Like we're able to pivot uh, and uh, be adaptable uh, and just be in line with consumer preferences, right? Reid, this reminds me of... Um... Uh, were you on when we when we were visiting Texas and the and the client said uh, so? Did you guys all live in a compound together? I don't think so. You weren't. Oh uh, it, well. So I definitely can pick up where you're going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because uh, Ryan, my uh, my wife, is our third founder, and we were saying, oh, we live up in the mountains in Bailey. And then we had this client that was like, so you guys all live on one compound? Like, is this are, is this like a Utah thing? And I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, anyways, but you got the 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 cafe, you got the the school. Um, does that mean then if, as you said third party operator uh if someone if wait, it, wait what's the name again pronounce it for me fitzrovia okay i was gonna say fitzology you know <laughs> did you get the sign <laughs> This that is, was this is one that, you would. That was, I would normally. I get see where you were going. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, nice try. Okay. Uh, was, good swing. Yeah. yeah I got to take a few. Yeah. Well, right. uh, does this mean that you guys hold on to management even after the property sells? Often, because you would think when it's branded in this way, it seems like it'd be hard to change over. This kind of is a continuation of another conversation Reed and I had. Yeah, with, and we don't mind sharing with Central. And yeah. so one of the questions I asked was, how much do you market the property versus Central? Um, and for you guys, same question, uh, knowing that you're trying to create this community and this brand, because right. with a lot of the conventional assets that we market here, that's not even a battle so much. It's like it's just a concession that, you know, we're not ever going to build enough equity with the property management name. And so we're just going to live with marketing the property. And if it flips in a couple of years and all of that gets blown up and reset, it is what it is. But it doesn't seem like 
you know, that's where you guys are headed with it. So that's an extension of what David was asking. No, no. Great question. Um, these are long-term holds for us, right? 30 plus years. Um, and so we are, we are not looking to sell these properties and, and make a quick dollar by, by any means. And so, you know, one of the things that, that comes up for us quite a bit is, you know, um, you can you can spend a ton of money on an individual lease up and lease up that properly. You can pardon me that property pretty effectively, right? Just focusing lease up to lease up, right? Um, but I, but I think one of the disadvantages there is that you're not really feeding that master brand, right? And so at Fitzrovia, we take a very different approach. We're actually investing heavily in that master brand and it's, it's marketing 101, right? It's, you know, why has the Four Seasons become so successful in a household name in hotels? It's because every time you go to the Four Seasons, whether it's in Toronto or anywhere abroad, whether it's Tokyo or Napa Valley, you're going to get the same shampoos. You're going to get the same house coat that's white with the the black Four Seasons logo embroidered. You're going to get that same experience, right? Like it's super consistent. And so we're trying to show the market that there's this consistent experience every time you lease at a Fitzrovia community. And so again, we're not just investing lease up to lease up, stabilizing and flipping it. We're investing in what makes Fitzrovia Fitzrovia, right? Um, it's a long-term play. We're the official rental housing provider of the Toronto Raptors. We are the official rental housing provider of the Toronto Blue Jays. Right, this is a long-term game for us, and we want to be that flagship name in rentals. and And the proof is in the pudding, right? Like we have a phenomenal resident experience. We have a full-time uh, resident experience manager. Um, all of our employees, our our on-site property management team, is flown down to Orlando, Orlando, Florida, on an annual basis to receive training from the Disney Institute. What an investment, right? These are long-term holds, right? The Ritz-Carlton comes into our offices every single year to train our employees. Um, we like to operate more like the world's most celebrated hotels versus just a rental. Um, and we're bringing that same service philosophy to all of our verticals, whether that's the modern vintage space, whether that's student housing, and, and hopefully uh, other verticals in the future. Wow, big pitch. Yeah. So, what's the B hag for Fritzovia? Um, are you familiar with the term? No. Tell me more. Uh, big, hairy, audacious goal. So, um, best example I can give you, and I know it's not going to be a Canadian one, but um, is we're going to put a man on the moon in ten years. You know, uh, from Kennedy, and return from, him home safely. And return him home safely. Thank you. From Kennedy. Um, so it's like, what is uh, you know the um, milestone that you guys are most excited to pursue and ultimately celebrate um is that already been identified or is it like we're that's not really the way we're approaching this it's more just um we're building this master brand we're going to keep you know adding assets and um creating something special or is there like a big destination that you guys are in pursuit of i, I think the destination is is very much like when you think rental you think Fitzrovia, right? Like very much like that. Like when you think smartphone, you think Apple, right? We want to be synonymous uh, with rental living, right? And and that's really the end goal. Um, and, and we're just going to keep putting in a, a ton of TLC and um, debating every fine detail, right? Down to the doorknobs. I mean, we will talk about in suite doorknobs for weeks and weeks and weeks because we want every micro touch point to be special, right? From the way that our lobbies are scented. And, you know, come Christmas time, we, we switch out the lemonada scent for the cinnamon scent, right? Like it's, it's the details that truly make a difference and sum up to something so, so special, right? Like you can go on a property tour and somebody hands you, you know, hey, like I, you gave me the floor plan and I want to write notes on the floor plan, right? So they hand you a big pen, right? That 
may not really be a big deal. But then when you go to a Fitzrovia asset and they, they hand you a weighted pen, it's gorgeous, um, it's property branded, all those micro touch points sum up to something huge and they make a big difference. And so we're going to keep focusing on the details and we want to be that household name. Reminds me, uh, Reed, I don't think I told you this story, but when I sold cars, this, so this had been like 2001, 2002, and um, I, my sales manager, his name was Rudy, and Rudy would always walk around, and he had a $10,000 pen, and I had the big pen. Actually, I don't even think I could afford BIC. Whatever's below BIC, that's what I had. <laughs> and and Rudy was like, David, you need to invest in a pen like this. You will close more deals. And I was like, I make $6 an hour, Rudy. <laughs> when am I going to get this? Mo-? I, it was like a Mont Blanc, Mont, Mont Blanc, Mont whatever. Blanc. Oh, yeah. yeah, the Mont Blanc. Yeah, I w- yeah. But he was like, it's a $10,000 pen. I was like, my credit card goes to $300, Rudy. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe I could get one of those nice inkjet ones or yeah. something along the way. I get his point, uh, <laughs> but I wasn't quite ready to to take that professional step in my life. Uh, anyway, so I hadn't told that to Reed before. I didn't tell him that story. <laughs> uh, I did not buy the pen. I'm sure Rudy's doing well. Um <laughs> Uh, so where I was going, oh, uh, so does this limit, are you guys going to go beyond Canada then? And you say you want uh, the BHAG would then be to be synonymous with renting. Do you guys break out of Canada or, you know, um, and it's fine if not, because I actually think Canada, at least from the U.S. side, is a, is a major opportunity yeah. for both the vendor and uh, management arm. But there's just been so much opportunity within the States. Many haven't tried to go north. We definitely have plans to extend beyond Canada. I won't. I won't say more than than that at, at this point in time. Um, you know, most recently we we made our way into the Quebec market, specifically in Montreal. We're operating two assets there in, in downtown Montreal. And if you guys are familiar with Montreal, if you've been to the city, it is just a wonderful city. Um, in terms of culture, in terms of people, in terms of food. And so we're very focused on that that market. We feel very strongly about that market. Um, there is a demand for that market. People want to live there. And it's no surprise, really. Again, it's a phenomenal city. So we're very focused on Quebec and Montreal specifically. Um, we, we'd love to be in Vancouver as well, another great city. Um, and we have the team to get there, right? Like we have such a wonderful team that has grown from um, 25 people when I started in uh, early 2020. We're now a team of over 300 people. Um, and that's because uh, people are resonating with what we're doing, right? Like I, I feel like in multifamily, um, we, we often get so caught up by what our neighbors are doing, what our competitors are doing. And we, we feel like that's the fully baked, like that's, that's the right way to do things. And, and listen, like we're not we're not perfect, but we're going to try new things, right? And if they don't work, we're going to learn some important lessons. We're going to move on, and we're going to we're going to keep trying. Um, and 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 the things that do work out, they they pay dividends. That really resonates with our our residents. They're enjoying the experience, and you know, competitors are are following suit, and and that's the biggest form of flattery, really. That's awesome. Well, Ryan, I know we have to let you go. Uh, if people want to learn more about the company or yourself, what's the best way? Uh, look us up, uh, fitzrovia.ca, uh, Canadian website, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> um, and then you could find me on LinkedIn. It's just uh, Ryan and then my last name, Funt. And I like to say fun with a T. <laughs> okay, that's a good That's good. Very well. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, this was great. All right, cheers. Yeah.